Well, welcome to Pondering Passages. Kurt and I are going to take a look at Psalm 132, and I have read that this is a complex psalm. So we invite you to journey with us, and we're going to end, I think, at a really, really cool place. And we're inviting you uh, to that as well. Welcome to Pondering Passages. We're going to take a look at Psalm 132 today, and I'm here with my very good friend, Kurt Austin. Steve Holt! Here we go. Did you say Steve Austin? Steve Holt. Steve, Steve Holt. Holt. It's, from, it's from a TV show. Oh, okay. Okay. Never good mind. to know. Good to know. So how are you doing, Kurt? You know what? I am jazzed, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's this espresso. I've Surely only had the not. one. Oh, you know what it is. I know what it is. Never what mind. Is it? I've had a couple Mountain Dews. I, I don't usually have Mountain Dews. I had, <laughs> yeah, a couple. Yeah. One's not good enough. And let let me chase that down with an espresso. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about, it, it may not be such a good idea. But I forgot that I had those. Okay, so anyway, I'm feeling great. I guess I you am... are. <laughs> Super charged. Yeah. Uh, just full disclosure, this is a little later than what we usually do the show, and it's actually a different night. Uh, so, Kurt, you know, he's he got prepared. He's, he's I am not planning this. on sleeping tonight at all. All so. right. All right. 132, Dave. Yes. Yes. Uh, interesting psalm, I thought. Uh, what were your initial impressions? You know, I've got written in my margin here in my in my Bible, uh, there's kind of a uh, a th- a theocracy kind of a theme to this yeah. there's a, and and a really strong um uh, uh pinging i guess that i mean it's kind of pop 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 about location of mm-hmm. of where the temple is and how important that is i mean i thought it was really cool especially if you put this in the context that they're walking up to jerusalem after probably being in exile and I, I I liked this psalm to be honest. I really did like it. It's not the prettiest of psalms. It's not poetic uh, by its nature, but I really did like the content of it. Yeah. One of the things I I notice is that there's like a parallel between David's reign and God's reign, and it talks a lot about the ark. Yes. Yes. Uh, about finding the ark, which. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, this I, 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 that kept running through my head as I was uh, reading this. But the it, fact it, it had been lost before, I think, and they were able to find it and bring it back, I thought was really cool. Well, it was actually captured before. Uh, well, I mean, it lost to the people of Israel. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. the Ark has a it's, it's an interesting story. The Philistines kind of thought it was why they were getting defeated by Israel. So they take it. And then all of a sudden they started being overrun with mice and, and other things. And so then they get rid of it. Yeah. And there it sat. And <clears throat> I find it interesting that uh, they connected the, the ark with uh, God's rest. Hmm. You know, verse three. Yeah. I will not go home. I will not let myself rest. Uh, I will not let my eyes sleep, nor my cl- nor close my eyelids and sleep lumber until I find a place to build a house for the Lord, a sanctuary for the mighty one of Israel. And well, yeah, I, and this I, is David talking, right? Yes, yes. And and I think it mentions rest three times in this in this this psalm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, if you go back and look at the history of of the ark, one of the thoughts was that you know God was traveling as well. You know, God was moving as well. Sure. And it was when yeah. he, he finally got to rest in Jerusalem. So, you know, mm-hmm. pilgrims are coming I didn't up. Pick that up. I didn't pick that up. That's really a neat parallel. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I will be honest. I, I did have a little trouble, you know, tracking with this, uh, probably because I'm not Jewish. Uh, it's not too late. No, it's not. It's never too late. <clears throat> so, but. Yeah, so so help me out here, Kurt. Where where did you okay. find yourself tracking? Uh, 
I a lot further down. Uh, verse twelve okay. is what really hit me. But so so let's keep talking well, about we got, this. We Just, got we got several verses to get to. Yeah, verse yeah. twelve. So. so you know, I mean, we I like that we heard that the ark was at uh, that place, Forgot and that. we found it Forgot in the distant that. countryside of Jaar. And you know, so I, I like that. It doesn't say we. It doesn't say what they did with it. They found it. Yeah. Uh, now let us go to the sanctuary of the Lord and let us worship at the footstool and enter your place along with the ark. It's almost like they're carrying. Now, see, this is this is cool. That uh, in verse eight, arise, yeah. O Lord, and enter your rest, resting place along with the ark. I mean, it, the symbol of your power. So, I yeah. mean, it goes exactly to what you were talking about there. You know, I mean, we're going to carry this ark back in. We're going to set it there. God, you're right in the midst of this. Um, and I like that you know, the priest, you know, in the New Testament, there's a lot of language about clothing, you know, putting on the armor of God and clothe yourself with holiness and righteousness. Mm. And here in verse nine, may your priest be clothed in godliness. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I like some of the imagery, but it just, uh, I just yeah, like and, the story itself. But, you know, and I, and I think it's really, I think it would really work well for, you know, especially pilgrims going to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thinking through, because this is the story. This is, and I hadn't thought about this before. This is the story of the temple because the temple didn't start out even existing. The ark was mm -hmm. what existed and it was a symbol of God's, God's presence. It was a symbol of God's power. And so, you know, God was on the move and he, just like the Israelites had no resting place. And David said, I'm, you know, back to here. I will not let myself rest until God gets that place of rest, even though David wasn't the one that ultimately built the temple. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, you get to verse 12, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so, I mean, and this is the interesting thing, then it, sh I think it shifts to this prophecy of a future king. I mean, it's kind of a promise that if, um, and this is why I like that, all of this stuff will happen. I'll place a descendant on your throne. But in verse 12, if your descendants obey the terms of my covenant and the laws that I teach them, then your royal line will continue yeah. forever and ever. So there is kind of a, it's a contingency on the fact that you've got to, you got to, you know, you're coming into the temple. You've brought the ark back. David has found this amazing place and it's all for naught if you don't respond in kind to God who has honored you as a people and you, if you don't honor God, then what's the point? I just, I, I like that give and take that was present there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it always been, you know, part of the covenant. Absolutely. They were to be faithful. And it kind of broke down with Solomon. If you look through Solomon's story, we always remember him as the wisest king ever. But when you look at the end, it basically says his heart was, I mean, he worshiped yeah. so many foreign gods, not just worship, but actually yeah. created places of worship for them, which is ironic because he also built the temple. Yeah. So strange. Such a strange yeah. story. Yeah. But, but, but thing, is it the, very different from our own? Well, it's, it's right. a lot different than mine. Maybe not yours. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, look at all these things. I worship that guitar and yeah, I worship that yeah. ukulele and I worship that yeah, picture over true. there. I just, I play mine. I, I, I don't, I can't play them. So I have to worship them from afar. But, but one of the interesting things is that the scholars, you know, those writing the commentaries and stuff feel like this is, this psalm was written after the exile. Mm-hmm. That's so it was long after David, long after Solomon, long after they had basically broke every term of the covenant had been, you know, cast out just like Adam and Eve were cast out of Edom. They were Eden. They were cast out of the promised land to, to Assyria mm -hmm. and Babylon. Mm -hmm. And now they're looking back, kind of remembering, kind of maybe re-remembering uh, how it all got started and maybe recommitting to that too. I don't know. Well, I think the recommitment is true. I think that right. If if I'm going, uh, if I'm going into the sanctuary of my church, that the idea is we are to recommit, right? I mean, it's Easter. It's Easter relived every Sunday. Yeah. 
that's that's the idea. Even in Lent, where we are preparing our hearts and we are living in kind of the darkness in preparation for that light advent, and we we are getting ready for that. We're preparing for that. In Lent, we don't count Sundays as Lenten days right. because that's it's the resurrection of Jesus reenacted each and every Sunday. And I think that's what this is. I think this is a uh, um, uh, re-remember the mm, truth yeah. of what you have been called to. Did you live up to it? No, not really. Could you live up to it? Absolutely, and you should. And it's still a promise because verse 11 says it's a promise he will never take back. Right. And he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, because Jesus is in the line of David, and and one of the things that that gets missed a lot of times, well, and I don't want to go into this, but the connection between you know Emmanuel uh, <laughs> with uh, you know Isaiah and the mm -hmm. king there, uh, and the fact that they went through just horrible, horrible time, and in the end, Jesus is still on the throne. And so David, I mean, God kept his promise to David yep. and Jesus, is, you know, yes, Emmanuel, God with us, because there's no way that that could have happened if God wasn't with us. Yeah. And it's right there. Well, and go on to verse 13, because then, you know, for the Lord has chosen Jerusalem, he has desired it for his home. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this, this is where it kind of shifts to more of a location rather than a position of the heart, I yeah. felt. Um, yeah. This is my resting place forever. I will live here for this is the home I desired. And I, if you want, I read, I read this, Dave, and I was thinking, I'm sorry to talk over you like that. that no, go funny. ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm used to it. Not with you, but just in general. <laughs> my, this is where it shifted to that location, and I could see where the the, the battle for Jerusalem um, as a holy city for Israelites. Versus, um, you know, for for any other faith group that's fighting for that space, it's like, well, wait a minute, right here, this is our space. This isn't just a another hilltop. This is this is everything right here. Yeah. Um, you, you know, there's in in Revelation twenty one, John talks about the new heaven and new earth and seeing the new Jerusalem coming down, coming down from God, from, from, yeah, from heaven. heaven. Uh, and it says that God is living with mortals at that point. And, and so I look at this and it connects me to this new Jerusalem, that this is my resting place forever. And it's, uh, you know, and I don't, I don't, you know, again, in the context where we are, I don't want to make too much of, you know, the new Jerusalem versus this Jerusalem. Uh, but, you know, maybe there's some connection points there. I really, I think it's so interesting that he's using, or the the writer of this psalm is using this uh, cl clothing, satisfying versus um, shame, shame, being satisfied, being shamed, clothed with glory, uh, clothed with shame, um, clothed with joy. The the uh, priests are clothed with joy. That's that is also a theme here, and I'm I'm curious, but I did not investigate that at all. But I'm seeing it now for the first time. Yeah. You know, um, and and I'm I'm noticing something too for the first time. You know, I, I wish we'd notice all this stuff before we, we we went live, but you know, I guess you can always edit it out. No. Uh verse nine. May your priests be clean. And I think this is you're referring to this. May your may may your priests be clothed with God in godliness. May your loyal servants sing for joy. And then Verse 16, I will clothe its priests with godliness. Its faithful service will sing for joy. So one is request, and this is like God is answering, say, yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, let's just live in that. The rest of the, the rest of the, of this conversation, let's talk about that. So we're, oh, I guess this is the last. Yeah, blow us up. Yeah. Oh. You can do it. Hit that button. <laughs> Move. There we go. <laughs> Never gets old. So, so a may and a I will. May yeah. your priests be. So that's my my request, right? And yes. I will being God's response. Yeah, God's to response. That. Wow. Yeah. 
what's that do? How's that play out in our own lives? How does that, what's that mean for us? You know, and I think this is sometimes where my disconnection is because it's talking about Jerusalem and, you know, uh, since I'm not Jewish, Jerusalem doesn't have the same, I mean, I'll never understand what Jerusalem is for someone who's Jewish. You know, I can try to enter to that, yeah. but I don't think I will ever be able to. Uh, but the things I can enter into is is this whole idea of rest, um, of, you know, kind of arriving at a destination, uh, of making a journey and finally being, you know, where that journey is over. And, and maybe that's, you know, God saying, I will live here. I will bless this city. I will satisfy its poor. I will clothe its priests with godliness. Its faithful service will, will sing for joy. And he continues to say, this is what I will do. And, and maybe maybe this is where it connects up with the new Jerusalem. And, and that is where finally those things actually happen. Okay. Throwing an idea out there. Okay. Uh-oh. This is, is the mountain. We're getting, we're getting different now it's either the mountain dew or the espresso or the holy spirit i don't know i don't know aren't we the temple of god that's what i read yeah so so when when the the presence of god comes to rest within us we actually discover rest when the mm, presence yeah. of god comes into us we are clothed with joy we yeah. are clothed with holiness and sing for joy <laughs> there you go see there we go all right, Isn't well, it's that... been fun, guys. Uh, <laughs> this... I mean, this... let's think. Let's think about that. I mean, maybe that's. I mean, isn't that why this passage is in this book for us? Because it then it is a reminder constantly to seek the ark, to mm -hmm. seek the presence of God, yeah. to bring that, and not only to bring it into where we reside, but to to make the journey where we need to go to, to discover that. Um, this is this is not just a story of someone that's marching up to Jerusalem. This is a story who is seeking to have the presence of God indwelling. I like that, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're seeking, you know, the pilgrims are seeking to go to Jerusalem, but we are pilgrims as well, and we're seeking God's presence. Yeah. Because for them, the temple held the presence of God, and as you said, now we're seeking to uh, bring that presence of God into us uh, so that we might be actually his, his temple of flesh, so to speak. When's the last time that we truly were seeking God where we, we would say, I, I'm not going to go home. I'm not going to sleep. I'm not going to let my eyes close until I find that place where God can reside in my heart. Mm. You know, we just don't do it. We get distracted by so many yeah. other things. And rather than bringing that in, bringing God's presence into our heart, uh, you just you just have, um, for those of you who are following this for the very first time, Dave and I talk about life. We don't talk about this passage, these passages, we just talk about life. But one of the things that we were just talking about was, uh, before we started, was this, uh, th the idea of daily practicing and how do we how do we grow in that? How do we live a life of examine where we become better through practice? Yeah. All right. And I don't know that it's really any different than living in Psalm 132 mm. and what it's saying to us, where we then make that a part of who we are. Mm. I like that. I like that. I, I will mention that. When I, st when I started reading a commentary on this, the very first line they said is, this is a very complex psalm. You know, and, and, and so some of these you, you really have to sit with and, and, and work through like what we've been doing. Um, but I, I think we've arrived at a really good place. So, Kurt, thank you for that. That's, um, well, thank, thank, God bless Mountain Dew. I mean, it's just, I know. No, and express the Holy Spirit. Spirit. It, it, putting express, those two yeah. things together, you know. So that's that's the ticket. Two Mountain Dews, one espresso, you know, they, at, at 4 30 in the evening. That that is yes, marvelous. I am not gonna sleep at all tonight, <laughs> but I'll have something to think about. So that's you good. will. You will. So, so for those of you who are joining us, um, along on this journey of looking at the Psalms, uh, this was a song of ascent. 
And next week, we'll be talking about Psalm 133, also a song of ascent, three verses. And the week after that, Song of Ascent 134, last one. That'll be the last one. So it's three 120 verses. through 134. So Yeah. So uh, I've loved them. I really yes. have loved them. They've I've been, forgotten. They've been, they've been great. Yeah, they really have so. been. Well, man, uh, thank you. And and thank I guess you. if you're watching, well, I, I guess you have to be watching to hear that. Uh, you know, <laughs> click, click the like button. I guess it's, it might be over there. I don't know where exactly it is, but yeah. click the like button and subscribe, and and you'll get notifi yeah. notified that we're 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 coming on mm -hmm. or dropping a new episode. And I think we're also on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, podcast, podcast. We have, what else? we have a website. Oh yeah, we have pondering a pa ponderingpassages dot com. And pretty actually, soon we're going to have coffee mugs that we're going to be able to sell. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're coming. Hey. Okay, they're coming. Uh, and uh, on on pondering passages, you know, if you don't want to do this stuff on YouTube, you can actually go to pondering passages, and it, it's set up like a course. And so you can start with sixty nine because that's the one we started with, and continue to go through. And who knows, you might actually get caught up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many options. So many. Yes. So yes. many. So many yeah. options. So so little time. Amen. All right. Well, we will see you next time. And we hope you have just a uh, wonderful time seeking and journeying with Jesus. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Have we got a great psalm for you? No, that's Do we? That's the, that's, no, we don't. Well, <laughs> they're all great. They're no, all great. This yeah. one stinks. <laughs> I'm going to tell God you said that. He heard oh, me. Oh, wait. He already knows. Yeah, he, knows. He, he knew what I was going to say before I said it. Yeah, but he can't believe you actually said it. <laughs> That's the thing. Rewind that tape. Was he really going to say that? Yeah. So hey, it's all Thursday right. night. Is it football night tonight? It is. And I can who's, watch it because it's on Amazon Prime. Who's, who's playing? I you don't, don't even care. You don't, don't even know. It's football. Who cares? <laughs>